So this is a, a durational performance work by a Taiwanese-American artist called De Ching She, and it's entitled One Year Performance 1980 to 1981, and it's informally known as the Time Clock piece. And the departure point for the work is a statement by the artist that he will punch a time clock on the hour, every hour, for the duration of a year. Uh, so in 1980 in Manhattan, in the artist's studio, he installed a time clock and then proceeded to punch it once an hour on the hour. So he never slept for longer than about 50 minutes. He never left the apartment for longer than about 50 minutes. And what we see here is the documentation of that performance. So there are punch cards for every day of the year that he punched the time clock. And then there are a series of film strips Every time he punched the time clock, he had his photograph taken. Um, and you see uh, around 8,760. But then there are 133 instances where he actually missed punching the time clock. So, um, so there's an element of sort of failure built into the work. And you can see the instances in the, in the film strips themselves where through mechanical failure or human failure, he missed punching the time clock and taking the photograph. And then all the film strips are combined together in a 16 millimeter film that's six minutes long that is, is sort of sped up and gives a much more sort of sense of the kind of schizophrenic delirium that he'd entered in undertaking this very uh, singular uh, activity for a year. This work is the second in a series of durational performance, one-year performances that De Ching undertook, and he talks about choosing the year uh, as a, the year being a very human unit of time. It's the time it takes for the Earth to revolve around the sun. Uh, it's, it's the unit we speak in, um, in terms of our ages and the passing of time. So they, that was how he sort of just decided the parameters for that work. I, I see these durational performances very much as uh, sort of philosophical investigations or propositions into the nature of time, life and being. Um, De Ching thinks very philosophically about these works. I mean, I think they often do have a political dimension to them, particularly this work because with its, with its uh, motif of the punching of the time clock. It invokes the idea of sort of industrialized labor and the situation of say a factory, factory worker and, and even aesthetically with his shaved head and the, the gray uniform, there is that sort of suggestion. But De Ching is very keen to play down uh, that political element in favor of something more broadly philosophical or sort of, a, a, you know, he, an interest in on, ontology in the philosophy of sort of being really and being in time so that's the sort of standpoint he's coming from he often uh, speaks about the myth of Sisyphus pushing the boulder up the hill and I think that is useful in terms of thinking of the, the philosophical framework this this quite punishing activity but one in which there is a sort of satisfaction or gratification of sorts Life is a life sentence. Life is passing time. Life is free thinking. So that is basically my work from this, this philosopher, you know, is consume more time until die. But I, I'm not trying to, to make a, uh, concepts about how to pass in time. I'm just basically passing time. So a person is working hard or lazy, or very quiet or less quiet. It's all same about passing time. Of course, you want to say, for example, this piece, time clock piece, every hour I punch time clock, every hour on the hour, it's repeating, right? But you know, every time, our change is very different. In human, to deal with time, we know time, you don't stop. It's a, what we call moving, right? Means uh, every minute, every hour is different. You don't, you cannot go back, right? So every time is different, and also, but it's the same thing. We do same thing, but every 
ours is different. You know, so it's, it's that way we understand in life. You know. One of the most interesting things about De Ching is that he was making this work in all of these durational performances in the late 70s and early 80s, largely in isolation. Um, uh, they involved very, very solitary work. And he, uh, for a time, he was something of an outsider artist. I mean, for many decades, in fact. He, these works had a very limited audience, and his biographer, Adrian Heathfield, talks about them as sort of existing on the edges of public visibility. And it's only very recently that uh, the audience for these works has grown and that De Ching has, has received the sort of recognition and, and been written into those official art histories and um, collected by you know, the relevant institutions. And so uh, I, I personally find one of the more interesting aspects of this, the work is this very dogged persistence um, and relentless dedication to this project, largely undertaken in isolation. De Ching would often cite Russian literature as being an influence, and um, writers such as Dostoevsky and Kafka, but there's almost something also a bit Beckettian about this work, and the level of sort of abstraction and stylization, but also the sort of pathos. Maybe, maybe not so much the humor, but yeah, I think there is this kind of tension between uh, uh, the systematic undertaking of, of this very single-minded activity and the clear physical and psychological toll it's taken on him, which I, I guess the formal, formal nature of the, the documentation uh, encapsulates quite succinctly. What I found particularly interesting actually is learning that with these year-long performances he undertook a week's long rehearsal before he committed to them to get a sense of whether he was confident he could achieve the project. And he was saying if, if he was sort of 70% sure he could achieve it, then he'd proceed. But he got a good sense from that week about whether, whether he could handle it sort of physically and psychologically. He's clearly, uh, he talks about being interested in probing the universal circumstances of uh, human beings. And there is something so fundamental about this, um, but at the same time very, um, there, are, there are existential investigations, but they're, they're also very material, they're very highly invested physical experiences that are sort of exploring human existence. In that context, it, the failures which are come much more apparent when you yeah. look at them in, in a grid mm. have much more kind of resonance. Mm, absolutely. And he sort of, he talks about, um, you know, most of the projects involved 100% effort for 95% success. And he, he says that a little bit of damage is good for the system. So I think the, I, I find that the element of failure in the work is very interesting and the way they're inscribed into the presentation and acknowledged um, is really key.